just really out of curiosity and a general desire to contribute to the general body of knowledge of, on in ophthalmology as in medicine in general. I was also fortunate enough to have uh, good mentoring from the likes of Professor Wong Tianyin and Professor Hong Tin. Well, I think most people who enter a residency program in, in uh, Sing Health these days are matched up with a research mentor who will get them going. Uh, if, it, if it's not in an area they're interested in, they can introduce them to other people who can get them going. And with the number of projects we have going on now at SNEC, it's easy to, to find something to do. What drives most of us to do research is to be able to solve problems that you see every day in the clinic, um, the patients that you deal with, uh, questions that you cannot answer, and questions you feel almost sheepish about when someone comes to you and says, hey, well, why is this like that, or why can't this be like this, or why haven't you found a better cure, and things like that. This particular award was given for a clinical study. Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, there are a lot of people who say that this sort of clinical work, database management, is really boring, and it's really not fulfilling, but I think it forms the platform and the basis of whatever we do from here on in. And, 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 and so it is with me as well, because the database tells you what the common problems are. There's no point studying something esoteric and rare. You, you've got to face these mm -hmm. things head on. So looking at the database, looking at what patients go through, it, it, answers the que it, it asks the question, the important questions, the common questions, the questions that we grapple with on a regular basis. Sometimes we, 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 we focus so much on the esoteric and the rare at the end point that we forget the practical things. So head and neck cancer is a great example. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about targeted therapy, about the pharma being a multi-million dollar industry and all that. But really, by the time those drugs are being used, you're talking about a cream of 5 to 10% of patients mm -hmm. who are very sick to begin with. They've got metastatic disease. We're neglecting the 90, 95% who we're actually trying to cure. Mm -hmm. So the, the shift should come away from the, the, the sexier pharma-related sort of things to more practical, perhaps conventional, rational use of conventional treatment. So the goal of ASP is number one, uh, to ensure patient safety, uh, to reduce the antimicrobial resistance, and actually to us, it's not really important to decrease the utilization, uh, the cost, sorry, the cost of antibiotics, mm -hmm. but more importantly to uh, promote the appropriateness of use of antibiotic in the sense of duration, dose, and choice. They are important to actually reduce the antimicrobial resistance with lesser and lesser antibiotics that are available. There is a huge number of proportion of patients who don't necessarily need antibiotics and we are hoping that through antimicrobial stewardship program, we not only educate the physicians not to overly prescribe, um, we are also trying to reduce the antimicrobial resistance as a result of this uh, prolonged education and also to cut the use of the antibiotics. In order for an ASP program to work, we need not only uh, we need a whole institution support, including also as well as nurses who actually inform the doctors that we have put in an intervention, and then they will follow. The doctors will then follow up, or else we will also have to follow up. So I guess it's a whole big team and a whole institution support.